Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Sita. Uh, my name is uh, Representative Linus. Okay. So we uh, represent our house as a Nigerian constituency in the House of Commons. Okay. Also a farmer. All right. We've been hearing so much about your foundation. Could you give us a highlight about what it's all about? Uh, yes, we um, align with the Crow Foundation, it's a very high foundation. It's um, a platform that we've chosen to use to reach out to our constituents first, but more importantly to society. Uh, it's over 2,000 beneficiaries, and each one of them received some a mixture of um, uh, uh, um, equipment for what they are trying for and cash, and some other people cash all through for them to apply as approved. And uh, we're also building an ICT station. Luckily, as we speak, just this last week, uh, we signed an agreement with Microsoft. Initially, they were going to be a Microsoft Academy. In the, in, the, in the probably past two years, that we've trained and empowered more than 2,000 youth and women in the city, or some much other people as well. Indeed, from um, January 2018 till now, we've turned over 1,500. In the last week, the week that just ended yesterday, uh, we had a total, okay, put the two weeks out to yesterday. We trained a total of uh, 160 persons. So, but what is most important is not that much, it is the training teaching over 2,000 persons. And like everything, if you're really going to be a success, you must start small and then build. You can you start small, you make your mistakes, you learn the ropes, and you now go. And we're seeing quite a number of them. But one of the times I get get satisfaction is when those who have uh, grown their fish to table size, bring for me, some will dry it, some will bring their chicken, then they dump, some will bring cassava, because uh, in 2016 we took them and then we become a member. But for now, people in every community in my constituency, there are coordinators, and often clans actually in some communities, they are coordinators, and they are continuously and aggressively open to people who want to join. Each time we say train, we make sure we select from every of these communities so that we keep integrating them. And Hi. Yeah, definitely, that's um, a, a thing of great joy, especially if you have to join a clan. Then I might have done, and each other is very important. One great motivation that I've had that has pushed the focus of my current training activity is the work is open to again empowering. Outside infrastructure development, which is excellent thing. For me, the greatest achievement to be ranked for the best five rice producers in Nigeria, such that as we speak, there is no quality of rice, or excellency, as I would say, is not factored in as one of the five three, four, or five members of such a clan. Such that the ABU roads, such that the CGM. Have come to a point stage and had to take a tour of even the children's farms to go and see what is happening. A number of thousands of upon youth. It was very easy for Caring Heart to put together those who are taking training under Caring Heart, under the value chain, who are using more money to move forward their businesses. And I'm sure as of today, our record is showing that over 500 people trained by Caring Heart and applied under excellence. So we can see the synergy and the multiplying effect, and all of it is driving from that vision, peace, security, and joy. Of course, if you talk about the larger one, who want to cause some crimes, do not do it under the cover of light. They do it under the cover of darkness. By therefore providing this continuous stretch of paved roads with um, um, street lights, they have denied these criminals opportunity to use them. And we can see the data increasingly down in Abakali Urban, Atis, Nwameke, which are semi-urban areas. If you take the issue of water, water is life. Before the training, providing the, 
the uh, other inputs that's required for effective and efficient power delivery. The educational system, the, we have been so, yeah, so the government has gone so far, not just providing infrastructure, but making sure that any opportunity for cheating in exam is blocked. Now you have to write a mock exam as a child going for WAEC or NECO. You should learn from the master that is the governor and is going to be doing. Of course, he has not done everything that needs to be done. But nobody can do all that needs to be done because time, resources, and opportunity will constrain you even a man with the best of intentions. But that is why we come to the point of this. That as something like that approaches, there's a lot more for him to do to bring you to the top. Or drive you to such a point that they are all irreversible. Extra revenue that's important. As far, if you can't come home, put yourself together. Once you are up to 50 in a location, a bonnie state has an arrangement to facilitate how you can take advantage of the public platform and transfer your Star card home without coming home yet. For you to do that, then you must come together in a group of 50 and above and call the government, call me. I will let you know how you can do that from wherever you are. But we need everybody to come home and go so that this governor will come back to his second tenure and push forward the frontiers of development for the state. And when the next person who came up from him, it will be easier for the person to continue without reversing policies that are doing well. You have spoken so well, sir. Could you could we actually go out from this point and um, talk more about the civil civil servants? Um, in the area of um, salary allocation and the civil servants, because some questions are actually popping up right here, and uh, most of these issues need to be addressed adequately. Could you emphasize more about um, the salary allocation to civil servants? This is Excellency Chief Engineer David Wizo Mai actually doing that, which he's supposed to do when it comes to salary payment of his workers? If I understand, can I, okay, if the salary payment, the one state is one state that pays on the 25th of every month. And workers have confirmed that. So if the salary payment is paying even well ahead of time, is one governor have, that pays 13th month consistently since he came into power. What is 13th month? You receive your December pay, and you receive another extra one month pay of equal amount the same time. The same December. For, I am not a civil servant. I do not have the payment structures of civil servants. I am not a state official, too. However, I am aware that workers in Bonnie State recently conferred on the governor a enduro title, which is friend of workers. I am aware that Bonnie workers have not gone on strike over issue of salaries. I am aware that workers came out in first October. Past, uh, let past October to say that the Bonnie State government is not owing them any salaries and that their salary ranks among the, uh, uh, I mean, if you are talking about the quantity amount, ranks among the highest within the Southeast uh, of states. I mean, I'm now quoting several servants, not me, because I don't have those records. So if the questions are being answered, I believe that if civil servants have any grieving issue and workers are like students, they are so free and so independent that no matter who you are, you cannot stop them from expressing themselves. I believe that if workers have grievous issues uh, with their payment, that industrial strife and actions will be so rampant in the point that nobody needs to be told that this is the issue. I may not stand up and say, like, God, the one state government is the highest salary. It should not pay because it's not receiving the highest allocation. As a matter of fact, it's in the last 34 rounds, always, of allocation. Maybe that is not 35, that is depending on, on the month and the circumstance. So I wouldn't uh, uh, say that it's paying the highest salary. But hearing from workers and seeing the commune declare on him and the uh, uh, um, confirmment of title on him, I believe that it goes to say that he's doing enough given the circumstance and agreement between the Bonnie State government and the Bonnie State workers. 
if there are any other direct and clear issues that are being asked, if I have a question to answer to it, of course I'll pose it. But generally on issue of salary payment, you pay 25th of every month, like Christmas and Easter, sometimes earlier, pay the 13th month. And recently, the issue of um, uh, gratuity and uh, pension, I understand that people are not all pay, uh, pensions they both state, I pay them to date. The issue of gratuities, uh, at some time late last year, some percentage was paid. During the last address by the governor, he said another certain amount was also going to be paid. I, I can't confirm now if that has been paid, but I know for him to have um, committed to it at that point, it's likely that those workers whose gratuity, if I don't you are still outstanding, they are received those payments. I, I don't have the details. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Um, let's talk about empowerment in the state. Um, besides infrastructure development in the states, we um, abroad are actually watching you right now, and um, they are not actually they don't actually understand what you mean, what you meant by a boy state has been developed infrastructurally. Could you actually and highlight us more about that aspect? I, I, I wish we were doing this interview outside. I would have just said, let us take a run, live, or some of Somebody from Abakari, we are talking about infrastructure. The basic thing we used to know about when we were, we are sort of the nation. We used to call us soft, a host of the nation. Now in Abakari, you are here standing, you have a weakness. There is no part of Abakari, you go through even the heat, the midst of the highest summer time, that you run in dusk, Abakari, Abakari. Our roads are not just tired and paved, our roads are concrete, tired, tired, tired and paved with street lights. Those is a criteria for modernity in infrastructure development. We have the um, overhead bridges that have reason to take away and move out um, uh, traffic. Some people are saying, is that what we need at this point? But the question is, when do you not need? something that will prove on infrastructural capacity and a capacity to grow, for a city to grow and expand. When do you need it? That is the Trans-African Highway. That is a road that covers over seven countries. That is going from Enugu through Abakanki to Goja, going to Cameroon and continues into North Africa. That is the road we have. And it's only a virtual leader like the governor who will see that the time is coming very soon. When congestion, when all that stretch of road is completed across, through Nido Cameroon. When congestion, whether the shortest way to come into Nigeria, into southern Nigeria, to Lagos, and all of that, for people coming from this part of uh, East Africa and uh, uh, West, uh, Western Africa. That's the best, easiest, or shortest way to come. And I'm going to find that all the traffic will build through here. If the city does not build those three bridges that bridges are built now, a time will come at that time will be choked. We we'll have to do it with the convenience it has been, it has been done now. As we speak, His Excellency is a Christian. We are Christian predominantly. We have other um, uh, religions, the Muslims, the African countries, but the predominant religion in the Bonnie State is Christianity. And so it's, uh, it's so he said, I'm going to do this for the Lord. And people are saying, Is that what we need? When do we not need God in the affairs of man? When is it that we don't need God in the affairs of man? As we speak, Donald Trump, the president of America, his campaign and his promise are called on his face as a Catholic. And everything, including moving the capital inside the embassy of uh, America's uh, embassy in Israel, from where it was to Jerusalem, is called on a religious faith and biblical injunction. And people ask, how can building the largest ecumenical center that will house thousands and thousands of people to worship God and pray God, how is it in development? What is a tourist site, even if we leave the issue of uh, uh, the ecumenical center as a religious center? It is a tourist site. It's planned to come from different places, hold programs for come to see it as a place. Automatically, uh, tourism will increase, money will come into the point state, the hotel infrastructure will have to improve continuously because more people will need to be accommodated. Uh, farmers who are selling their rice and selling their beans and all of that will sell more. And this pride effect is there. Right beside there is putting up a mall. A mall that's also bigger than the shop rights 
that we know now. Walk into any shop right now in any part of Nigeria and see the crowd that is at that point, at any point in time, until they close shop in the day. Then you now ask if building a mall of equal capacity or larger capacity is an improvement in infrastructure and improvement of organization of the state. The issue of light and street lighting in the state, the issue of water running continuously across the streets and across into homes, the security that provided for making a, a convenient the environment for investors to come in. But it's modernization. This is a modernization. And it's not just restriction of locality. It is happening, you get to know okay, you can see it. You get to Afipo, you can see it. He built a modern market in Afipo to move a key market away from that center. Any Afipo person will know that that is the center of Afipo and it's congested. If the market is done, international market being built, is done. And in conjunction with my education that I removed that place, that place will become open for new infrastructural development to further beautify um, Afipo and create a, a living office spaces for a, a, a town that is on the hill that does not have much land and surrounded by rock and water. That is development, that is improvement. If you get to a vulnerable people in the offense, they, 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 they have created a new road that connects Ishago to Akeze. That people, some people, I'm sure, who have not come in two years will be shot to go and run through. He has built around every local government, and like I mentioned, at least 20 kilometers of road. That is interconnection of the state from one place to another, so, so that movement of people and goods and businesses and seamless. What is an uh, improvement of the society? That is infrastructural development, that is modernization. Because if you were to build islands that are not interconnected, there will not be exchange of ideas and exchange of businesses. But these roads that are connecting every local government and improvement in agriculture that is going on in different places. And the loan, let me talk about that. The presidency has secured with the help of industry about 20 billion or 8 billion now that's available for Ebonians and Ebony residents to access through uh, to, to start businesses in Ebony state. That is exciting and it's an, an, an interest rate of not more than 6 to 9 percent. We don't exist anywhere in Nigeria in the commercial banking framework. That is modernization. That's the opportunity to turn around this state with cheap capital, with opportunity, with land that's granted uh, almost um, uh, free access, freer access to, to land for you to develop. There's um, uh, 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 sites that have been uh, mapped out, as we speak, for industrial sites in the three zones. And these have been provided for residents to come. So we can take many more of our children away from focus on politics as a way of life and get into businesses as creators of wealth and employers of them. So I am certain, and anybody needs to come to see that the things that the government is doing are weaved together in such a way, when you put each piece together, you find a larger view telling you that it is constructed to provide development and expansion of the place and modernize all of us so we can move into the community of states that are developed and self reliant. Okay, sir. You talked about um, the mall in comparison with shop rights. And um, I asked, how does that, you know, help Ebonians, you know, to, to actually get empowered by such um, infrastructure development? Um, inside the mall, you're going to sell all man, sell, buy and sell all manner of things. Some of them will be agricultural produce because these are all more if we're going to have sections. Remember, outside the rice field, Abakaliki rice, the next thing for which Abakaliki was known was a carbon market. What is a carbon market? What was it? It is absolutely the short source, a, a farmer's market where you come to buy agricultural produce in the east of the Niger. People come from Cameroon, bring, come from Angola, come from Dahomey, come from different places. But don't go to come to sell and to buy. People come from Lagos, but not all parts. As we speak, they see come. Those are the three things for which Abakaliki was known for the creation of the state and when the new revival of South Improvement started. 
Now, such a mall, you can imagine if a car bar that was structured could generate so much importance and influence, including affluence, economic capacity for environment, for the Abakaliki man at that point. You cannot imagine a mall that is designed and managed professionally, that women can navigate through cooperatives and produce only vegetables, or go, and they bring it there and it's taken up immediately and sold through the, uh, the chain. The people who do their poultry, do, poultry, do their fishery, Ebonians are going to be supplying most of the basic things and raw materials because many things will happen in there. Things will be produced also semi-processed. This is a ready market. More importantly, we run to Enugu, we run to Lagos, we run to Abuja to go and buy different kind of things, including wares, including household items, children things, toys, motherhood, livelihood things. You don't need to do that. What does he say about the person? He saves you the transportation to go to Enugu and saves you the risk of going on the road. Therefore, you are going to get these things cheaper, less the transportation. Because remember, people in the mall are going to be bulk buyers, bulk breakers. There are people who buy in bulk and sell at lesser margin than you get in the open market. So you are going to find a, 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 a fundamental increase in economic activity in the state through larger uh, money supply because people are supplying things to the mall, people are buying things from the mall, and services are rendered. Accountants are working, secretaries are working, uh, people who are attendants are going to be there, computer operators, and all manner of people. Such a mall is going to employ people in thousands. Who are these people? They are bony people. So you find that between the mall, and the loans that the government has created opportunity for people to take. And that uncle borrowers came, that you are going to find close to 500,000 people engaged in the short time by the time these things run a cycle. And as we speak, urban workers are probably, maybe less than 10,000, probably. So, can they see the multiplier effect of just the uncle borrowers scheme, the BUI loan, and such a model put in place? Interspace with this infrastructure as connecting all of them. Okay. Well, yesterday at Onitra local government, we actually had a rally of the adoption of His Excellency Chief Engineer David Rizzo Mai. And um, he approved, or rather, I think he said something about the ring road being put. Um, it has been considered to be acted on. Could you actually give us some highlights about that, sir? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, yesterday actually we were at Isoko, it's a clan in the local government area who has um, seen the great problem of his excellency and how good it is to them. Chose to host him to a grand civic reception, use the opportunity to assure him that he was the person they were going to vote for in 2019. That has happened in Omicha clan before now, in January, and uh, in, in, in January 2027. This was a total of other communities and local governments are doing the same. Uh, the road, His Excellency talked talk so much about the not the ring road. It was the road from Okwase connecting Omicha, Isu, Mubanede to Naira, which I started with called the F113 Federal Road. And uh, it was uh, confirming the fact that. But um, uh, last, sometime last year, the ministry he, the thing had approved under my application that the ministry uh, should cooperate with my office such that if I'm able to attract some money into the project, the state government can continuously match it up and then uh, start work on that route. And in that regard, he approved and the, I made the application to the Ministry of Works and actually sent me a letter of acceptance. And uh, what yesterday was explained yesterday was that we were able to attract some money into the budget of 350 million um, to the 2018 budget. And His Excellency affirmed that he will at least provide another 350 million naira or even more so that that risk can also stand the same. For us, that is a very, very, very great achievement because that is one road that is at the backbone of economic improvement between Isu or Necha, uh, opposite getting into the Ogulan, 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 
axis, which is Excellency, that project has been constructed by His Excellency. Another road also His Excellency approved for immediate award, say by June, July, is the road from Nkwebisu uh, to towards the Enugu boundary, straight on uh, through um, uh, uh, through Nkwebisu um, uh, to, to Enugu boundary. Yes, somewhere around there. You approved that and we are actually very excited because when these two network of roads, actually all of them come to meet somewhere at um, uh, Nkan. And when these two roads are done, the point is that would have been fully functional open. Because as we speak, if you are coming from Afi, the shortest route in Enugu is still that route. Come to Amasari, come through Okose, pass Amicha, get through Isu, get to Naira, Kano and next year in Ozalanenugu. Unlike having to go through Amasari, go to Okibwe, turn around and come out, or go through Ubu. Those are longer journeys. But these roads have been bad. They were last constructed by the Shagari regime in 19, between 1980 and 1992. So you can see how old, much better than some people. And that, that's, 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 that's the history of that road. So because of that, a lot of economic losses had uh, been brought upon all, all the people around it. These are core farming territories. So those are the roads you talked about. We are very excited that the president again, that the improvement and the and development we are talking about him and how he's changing the modern state. By the time we do that, there will be no other major road between Onicha, Ohoza, and Ivo that has not therefore been constructed by the Okay, sir. Could you give us from 100% actually give us the percentage of um, good quality That's a hundred percent. But because we are human, let's leave margin of error. I give the tendency ninety percent without any flicker of doubt that anybody can disprove it. Okay. On the roads, he has done. Okay. Yes, they are done qualitatively, quantitatively, and they are each time any person comes, including the Minister of Works, who came only three, four days ago, he confirmed that when he came a few months ago, last year, he saw some project being initiated, that he was shocked. Not only they have been completed now, but the quality of their completion was beyond what the state government would have been expected to do. That is a confirmation of a 100% performance. So when I keep 90%, I'm only leaving it for the critics so they can have something to feed around. Okay. All right. Um, on the area of... Um... Um, the investors coming into a boring state, which I believe infrastructural development is one of um, the many things that is needed for a developing country or a state. Right now, some of the detractors of the states do not agree to that. Could you actually tell us how possible or how um, infrastructural development can actually pave way for investors to actually invest in the state. And looking at um, the way a boy state is actually looking right now, why some of them are complaining about the heavy taxation and all that, how could you, you know, intertwine these um, two important um, issues? Well, the issue of taxation is something that. Um is very emotional and anybody will feel the pain for the burden of taxation if it's weighty on another person. But remember where are we coming from? We're coming from a time when nobody was paying any tax at all. So any form of increase or any push to of enforcement of even the rate existing will be seen as heavy. And 
I totally feel the pain and uh, of those. I understand it from that perspective. But no society, no government can discharge the responsibilities without getting the, the citizen to also offset their own responsibility. And that is taxation. Remember that taxation is about the percentage of what you earn that you are giving back to government and provide you the environment in, in which you operate. So when people start looking at it that way, start leaving the pain by looking at opportunities. The question has always been, why should people pay tax if they are not seeing evidence of what tax one is used for? It's understandable, a moral question. But in a situation where you are standing and riding on roads built by that government asking you to pay your tax, you are drinking the water that you know came from that government asking you to pay your tax. You are moving in the night that you can, even if you don't have um, uh, uh, a good uh, vehicle light, you are moving freely because the street lights are bright enough for you to drive even without the light of your car on. Why would you not be moved, therefore, to pay the tax for these services to be maintained and sustained and for expansion to happen? So I think that we need to show a lot more understanding. His Excellency has shown a lot of goodwill, a lot of commitment, a lot of sincerity in delivering this infrastructural uh, project. Since we are seeing them, we should see reason therefore to pay our taxes, which are obligations, which are obligations. How does infrastructure development bring about economic improvement through the investor confidence to come into a society a state? That is the point. We talk about the, the, uh, the business environment. The first always is infrastructure. In Nigeria, actually, after well, up power, roads, and the other utilities that are attached to it, then the next is security. Then the other one is um, uh, policy uh, consistency. And then again, the political will and the disposition of the government in place to allow the private sector to operate on theta within the laws of the land. If, therefore, as we have proven, that His Excellency has consistently improved our security, improved our road infrastructure, provided, uh, improved on uh, water, improved on electricity provision. It therefore means that he is being addressing the core issues that are needed for investors to have the confidence to come. What therefore has happened? We are, we are not pushed the frontier. We are not expecting that investors will reciprocate by bringing in their capital to come and invest in the and I believe, I suspect, that the more may not be a completely, a completely, totally government-funded program. It may be a, 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 a some form of partnership driven by uh, private investors, which is value addition and confirmation of the fact that what the SNC is doing in providing infrastructure to support investment is working. So, if we don't have enough investors now, and anybody is complaining, it's just a show of impatience. Because in two years plus, three years, it's not enough for you to create all the convivial environment for investors who need certain things assured to come into a state in flux. We need, therefore, another reason why His Excellency should be allowed to get a second tenure without a lot of hazard. So that if it pushes further the frontiers of what he's doing in improving this business environment, before his second tenure is over in 2023, I am certain and I can almost guess, I can almost foretell that upon private sector improvement would have been so much that even foreign investors would have come to a public state to invest. Okay, sir. Could you actually give us one word for His Excellency? How do you intend to support him? Yeah, His Excellency is not just um, a man who is committed to his people. He's a man who is committed to God and his injunctions around his life. The support I am giving him, upon which I'm asking a very abundant of giving, 
is total. Irrespective of any shortcomings anybody could want to point at, His Excellency has shown sufficient sincerity and commitment to the improvement of the economy, welfare of the people, of the land, of the infrastructure, such that we have no reason not to give him wholesome support going forward and into the election that is coming forward. For me as a person and my constituency, of course, you know, he's our son. We have a commitment that we have confirmed that in January 2018, uh, that we are giving, in uh, February 2018, His Excellency, he is the only governorship candidate that my constituency, the people, have agreed to support. We are not saying that other people are not free to contest. This is a democracy, they are free to contest, unfettered access, nobody is going to stop them, nobody is going to physically challenge or divide them, nobody is going to crush them, but our people have decided that the only crushing that will happen is the use of their votes to cast for the Jinnah Day Umari massively in such a way that it will be a crushing defeat against anybody who chooses to stand against him. 